Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we are reviewing a guitar that I picked up from the Gibson demo shop, but it's the one that I wanted to initially feature back when I did the SGCM video. So this is going to be another video about the CM series, we've talked about it before, and there's even another model within this whole lineup that I didn't even know about until today. So it was the mid 2010s when these things first came out. I believe 2015 was the first year and they had so many different iterations. Like today we need to talk about one that I didn't even know existed. So the original CM was just called the Les Paul CM. It looked like this over here. But then the next year they got rid of the 2015 specs on it and they called it the CMT, not country music television, just a T for traditional. That's just kind of what they did at that point in time to signify that hey, this has normal specs. But then they also did a CMHP that I did not know about, so it had the high performance specs. So kind of similar to the original run, but then there were the cool spin-off series, at least that's what I'll call it, of the CM Black series. So I've already reviewed a CM Black SG. I've got it over there so we can compare these side by side. I also have a great video on the original Les Paul CM. Actually, I think it was the CM T, but you can check that out here because that's where we discuss what CM means. Does it mean chick magnet? Does it mean chucker mod? I guess you can watch that video and find out. <laughs> But today, let's check this bad boy out. I've wanted one of these for a while. They are so cool. So just like the SG version, this is just the same thing pretty much in Les Paul format, except for, you know, as compared to a regular Les Paul, it's thinner. So kind of like a Les Paul special, but it is completely mahogany. There is no maple top on here. So that means you get to see all this beautiful wood grain under here. So I really like that. Sometimes they'll put like a white finish underneath there and you can call it like the hair of the dog. You can check out this studio video if you wanna see a studio done up like that. But other than that, I mean, most notably on the CM Black series is the FRX system. This was, you know, fairly new at that time. They wanted to try this top mounted Floyd Rose system. There are no routes in the back of this thing. So you don't have to worry about, you know, tensioning springs and stuff like that. It's all within this system. And then check this out. Sweet, dirty fingers pickup. So these are ultra hot, definitely made for metal playing. And that's the plus series. So they're even hotter than the regular dirty fingers. And you can see that the lettering is done in red. And to further make these things cool, take a look at the headstock. You get the custom emblem as well as a red Gibson logo. And you get the red perloid dot inlays on the side with an unmarked rich light fretboard because this was born within the rich light year. So not ebony, but still kind of cool. So this particular one was made in 2016. As I told you before, it came from the Gibson demo shop. I was able to pick this thing up. You gotta be fast to get these. But generally speaking, these are a lot more expensive than a regular CM, because those guys, they're just one pickup wrap tail piece. Clearly this is <laughs> way more advanced than that. And since there were so few of these things put into production, you know, they've kind of become collector's items yet today. And there's a lot of players that seek them out too. But originally they do ship in these gig bags. That's pretty much the worst thing about the CM series. If you like a case, you have to buy it separately. So I actually picked up uh, one of the SG CMs a week or two ago, and I figured, you know, I wanted to review this one, but we could take a look at it side by side. I think if you wanted one of these guys, it's because you like the SG body shape. I like SGs, but they're not my favorite. I definitely prefer Les Pauls. I and mean, you can see side by side, the SG is a, a little bit wider and it's more flat. I mean, this Les Paul still has a bit of a carve to it. And you can see there's a bit more of a, a belly cut down here. I mean, the SG has its bevels, but not quite the same. But perhaps the biggest difference between these two is the SGs have a mahogany neck, whereas the Les Paul has a maple neck. And since you can pretty easily see the wood grain, you see all the pores of the mahogany neck over here. If you don't like that, you'll like the maple version because the pores are much smaller. And sometimes you can find figured necks. Like this one has a little bit of figuring going on, but since it's such a dark finish, I mean, you're not really going to be able to see that. I mean, maybe in person, just maybe you might be able to see it. 
but I called this SG the most metal SG. And I don't know if I would call this the most metal Les Paul ever built. I mean, there's some pretty cool shredder guy guitars as far as the Les Pauls go, but what a cool set right here. That's another small difference I'm noticing. The truss rod no longer says black on this one. Unfortunately, that was a mod from the mod shop that I don't agree with. But hey, look at these two cool guitars. One of these just look great hanging on your wall. The only thing I wish they would have done differently, instead of having a no grain fill, like have a red grain fill, like the Voodoo series. And you also have models like the Blood Moon Explorer. They just kind of naturally fall within there. But before we throw this on the workbench, we do have a sponsor for today's episode, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a role-playing game, and you collect all of these different characters, and you can level them up, equip them with items. They start off as a lowly level one, and then you have to rank them up to the next star level. So naturally, I chose to raise an army of troglodytes here, <laughs> all the way up to this huge level. You can raise your own troglodyte army too by clicking that link in the description. But to complete my top five current favorite champions, we've got Aethel here. She was my first starter. I like her because she can attack multiple people on the stage. The Orc Shaman is pretty strong too. She has an exploit weakness attack that works really well. The Fang Cleric just has a really cool Grim Reaper-like design to him. Oh, and I like Frost skin because his name's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> There's also local and worldwide tournaments for different activities. I'm actually number one in my local lead, but when you go to the global leaderboard, <laughs> 90,000, I don't know how these guys do it. And they've just recently released five brand new champions. Take a look at them. So if you're interested in trying this game out for yourself, please use my links down in the description. And using those links or QR codes will also get you this epic champion and a great starter pack of items. I hope to see you there. You can find me as Unboxer, and at level 32, you better play a lot if you want to beat me in the PvP arena. I'll one-shot you. Inside the Les Paul CM Black. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. So as we were saying earlier, we have the Dirty Fingers Plus pickups on here. So these are a ceramic magnet pickup that has a double row of adjustable pole pieces. You can see them right here. That's the easiest way to identify a Gibson Dirty Fingers because I think they're the only one that does that. But the neck is an early 2016 made one and it's called the Rhythm Dirty Finger Plus. And our bridge is the lead. As far as our pickup cavities go, it's labeled SE for Satin Ebony, would be my guess, and then LPCM. It looks like it says big, but it's likely short for black. But this is all just a solid chunk of mahogany. Now it might be multi-pieced, we'd have to take a look. I'm not seeing any obvious spots, but usually when it's grainy wood like this, it's hard to tell where the join lines might be. I'm thinking I can just barely make out a center seam, so it looks like it might be at least be two pieces of mahogany on this one. It's like where it switches from this really blotchy looking wood to the more straight grain. It's like right along here is what I think I see it as anyways. But as far as our pickup readings go, bridge pickup is a hot 16.43k ohms, and our neck position is just about as hot at 15.78, with a middle in between there somewhere at 8.2ish. And your output jack is located on the side still, despite being a smaller bodied Les Paul. But now let's talk about the FRX system. As we learned in the last SG Black video, you can indeed actually install regular stuff on here if you don't like the Floyd Rose X. Because these things, they'll sell on the used market, I think about 200 bucks. So if you don't like it, you can literally just take that off. I mean, you're going to have a locking nut on your guitar regardless. I mean, you can remove these pieces, but you're never going to have a traditional nut unless you do a whole bunch of modifications. But that is an option for somebody because what you can do right here is you can sink some studs in for a regular Nashville style bridge. And then these guys just come straight on out. And those are the exact same studs that you can use a regular tailpiece on. So if you're not a big Floyd Rose guy, but you love everything else about this, it's possible. It's all in there. Honestly, I'm surprised they came out like that, but I'm very appreciative of it. But these little black things right here, I think they're just glued to the finish. You can actually take those off if you want to, but that's just to prevent some impressions happening in case somebody wanted to swap it over. But the FRX system itself leaves some impressions on the body. Since this is just such a thin satin finish, it offers no protection to the wood from getting, you know, indented and pressed upon. But you can see other areas like right here where there's a small ding in the wood 
There's like one right here. I mean, if you don't like getting impressions and dings on your guitar, this probably isn't for you. And being a satin finish, the more and more you play it, it's going to turn into like a semi-gloss. That's just the nature of the beast for these things. So the FRX system itself, it's quite chunky to be honest, but I'd say about a pound. Yeah, that's about accurate, a little bit under, about 13 and a half pounds. <laughs> Excuse me, I mean 13 and a half ounces. <laughs> Can you imagine a trem that weighs 13 pounds? <laughs> Maybe if it was made out of solid ultra heavy brass. But it has the regular Floyd Rose locking set up here, so you put the strings in like normal, you have your fine tuners like normal, but instead of the springs in the body, you actually just have like a master spring at the back of this. So as you pull this down, you're just compressing that spring. Now you can get away with getting like a, like a half tone up, but that's what's happening right here is you're gonna start to impress into the wood because, because what happens is you just start lifting the whole entire system up, which I'm sure that's not recommended. Now, in order to set this up, there is an additional little thumb wheel down here. So if you don't want to risk ever having this tremolo go backwards, you're not into doing that. I mean, even when it's all the way loose, you can really only go about a half step up anyways. But you can adjust that with this thumb wheel. So right now it's like down only. You can't pull it back. However, if you take that all the way off, then you have a little bit more freedom. but it's still not meant to be doing like dive bombs up and down. The whole way that this thing secures to the body are just these securing screws right here. You use a small little Allen key on both sides and that locks it into place. And then these guys right here adjust the height of the bridge. So if you need your action higher or lower, you use an Allen key right in here, just like a normal bridge. So if you know about Floyd's, this is, you know, pretty similar. Even if you're not a big Floyd guy, it's very easy to understand. As far as setting intonation, you got these screws down here. I mean, it looks scary, but it's not too bad. But getting it set up perfectly, that's that's up to you. I've heard some guys have trouble with the tuning stability on these. And unfortunately for these reviews and demos, I don't, you know, play them for weeks and weeks upon end. They're more so first impressions. So I can't really comment because you know, I don't have a lot of experience with regular Floyds either. But this is the second guitar I've had with it, and I've never had any major issues with them. But unfortunately, our red numbered knobs were taken from this one. What's up with that demo shop? <laughs> My best guess is one of them got cracked and it's like, you can't have one and one a different color. So they just swapped them both out. And it's just a master volume, master tone system. So pretty much a Les Paul Jr., but thin bodied, even thinner than normal with a comfort cut on the back, given a metal vibe. It's an interesting guitar, but again, it's mahogany with a maple neck and a rich light fretboard. Now it would have been cool to see these things get like 24 frets, but the Les Paul variant is just 22. You got the medium jumbos. The rich light fretboard actually looks pretty good on this one, I would say. You have just your regular 12 inch radius on this guy. Well, let's go ahead and grab our neck dimensions, of which I get about 1.68 inches at the nut, which increases to 2.09 by the 12th. With the first fret neck depth of 0.86, then increases to 0.99 by the 12th. So it's a C-shaped neck, pretty much a medium neck profile, I would say. Not overly thin, but definitely not thick by any means either. Here's a quick visual representation of that at first fret and 12th fret. You can see it starts off very rounded, but then it almost opens up a bit into a D shape. I mean, you don't have a lot of shoulder to it, but it definitely gets very wide feeling. Typical 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, and of course, the best feature are the red side marker inlays. That'll help you see them when you're on stage. And then the face of the headstock. It's such a letdown that the demo shop stole the black one because it says black and red lettering like you saw in the unboxing. That is like a key component that I don't think you'll ever be able to replace. I doubt there is anything wrong with it. Like even this pure black one has a small little over tightening crack right there. So it's like, why'd they do it? Why'd they do it? But they did it. The only thing that would have made this series cooler if they would have did like true mother of pearl and stained it red, that would have been cool. But you get black Grover tuners on here with a black locking nut system. Moving on to the back side, a little bit of a surprise in here, but honestly, I was expecting it. It's a PCB system, but this is one of the versions that 
they generally used in like Les Paul Jr. style guitars. I mean, it's that's kind of what this is. They're just Gibson branded, and that makes it really easy to swap these pickups out for anything else as long as you have the white quick connectors. There is a different version that was used earlier on. So there's some pros and cons to that, but you also have the back plate that has the built-in shielding to it. If you ever see that textured material, that's what that was. Sometimes it doesn't work the best and you have to ground off onto it. That's kind of why they stopped using them, but <laughs> it's part of Gibson history here. But that toggle switch just barely fits in there. They almost had to do an L style switch, but they happened to get away with that. And you're probably curious, I mean, how thick is this body? At the edge, that doesn't really have any type of a carve. It's about 1.4 inches, so almost an inch and a half, a little under. And there you can see your output jack on the side, and you have the large black strap buttons on the bottom and the top. And once again, that nice little slight contour. It's not like a full-on belly cut. It's just a little bit on the edge to make it a little bit more comfy. And of course, you can see all that wood grain, which is something that I like. But the difference between the maple neck and the mahogany is... If you rub your hand on this, you feel the divots of the wood grain. It's not like crazy gouges in the guitar, but like you can feel that, you know, there's a slight texture difference. When you swap over to the maple neck, you don't feel that anymore. It's a lot more smoother feeling. But, you know, if you're actually looking, you can still see that maple wood grain. So in many ways, Say you're a guy that doesn't like the feel of this on the neck, you might prefer the Les Paul version over the SGCM. That's pretty much the biggest difference between the two besides their body shapes. And as far as the backside of the headstock, it is a 2016 serial number, no matter what way you try to read it. Even if you went the whole year, day, 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 year type thing, it'd get you 2016, but you don't do that for 2016, it's just year. So this is just the production model of all the guitars made that particular year. You can't tell date of production from these serial numbers from roughly 2014 until early 2019 when they switched that back over to the serial number that I like. But if you're ever in doubt, it says it right here as well. And this one was originally part of the Gibson demo shop, meaning it had some sort of a blemish brand new. However, I would make the argument that this should have been stamped mod because they clearly changed some things about this. <laughs> you know, like we were talking earlier, the knobs, the truss rod cover. Maybe it's just something I didn't realize, like maybe the very, very early ones didn't have it. But that doesn't seem likely when the stock photo on Gibson's website advertising this thing had that. This one weighs seven pounds, about 15 ounces, which... I guess when you think about it, that's kind of heavy. There are some like really, really lightweight historics that can weigh that much. I mean, that's not common by any means. Normally they have to be chambered, but for being a thin mahogany body, that's a weight for a Les Paul that most people will be happy with. So let's go ahead, plug this beauty in and hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and run through the tones of this Les Paul. Right away, I'm noticing harmonics just come out of this guitar very naturally. And that's on the clean channel. Imagine once you throw some dirt on that. So if you like doing pinch harmonics, I think that'd be really easy on this one, as well as just the natural harmonics and like the places that not every guitar rings out clearly. But we'll start with our neck pickup here. juicy but articulate neck pickup here. Mm -hmm. 
But you got that same chiminess that you're used to in the middle position. And your typical bite in that bridge. <laughs> bright sounding instrument, super attacking. If you like that in your cleans, you're gonna like this. Otherwise, I find, you know, rolling it down to about seven mellows it up a bit. and try some distortion. As long as you only need a down trim, I think you're fine. It's kind of like a Bigsby, but a little bit more extreme. Like you can do that light warble effect, but it takes some control to make it not go super far. Thank you. 
Now that we know all about the Gibson Les Paul CM Black, what are my final thoughts on this thing? This is a great guitar if you need something that's a little bit more stripped back, feels raw, has a nice satin finish to it, and you want a little bit of a metal look to it because this, it's got the red, originally it would have had the red truss rod cover, but at least we still have the headstock going on with this one. It's just a, a really cool look to it. I can see why people appreciate these as much as they do. These pickups offer such clarity and crunch. They're definitely made for a certain genre, but you know, with the right settings, you can also pull off some jazz if you really need to. But if you need a guitar that looks the part and plays the part, I think that's why people search these things out. I really like the Les Paul body shape and the fact that it's thinner, has the cutaway, and is this raw satin finish. I really enjoyed playing this one. Now, Floyd Roses generally aren't my favorite, but these FRX systems... Now, there's guys that love Floyd Roses and they say these things aren't as good. I mean, sure, you lose some of the functionality of them, but generally the setup is a little bit easier on these things. I mean, you can still do some up bends but you're literally like lifting the system off the top of the body. <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily recommended. But if you just need a down trim only, kind of like a Stratocaster, it's definitely going to do the job. Is it my favorite Les Paul in the world? I guess it depends what style of music I'm trying to play that day. Generally, I'd probably prefer something a little bit more traditional, but you know, it just depends what you're trying to play. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out this Gibson Les Paul CM Black. That concludes my CM series. I don't think I'm interested in reviewing an HP or an original series CM. So that's another one checked off the list. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.